There was a house in San Francisco, I was reading about this, that sold, I think it was originally a $20 million home. It was bought and it was sold for $11 million. And I've been hearing all sorts of like crazy stories. Presumably this is part of the reason that the recall went the way it did in that, uh, in that school district. But the situation that you described earlier, that you know, this, the crime and these policies are coming, the chickens are coming home to roost in these places. I think in San Francisco is kind of a case in point right now. So what do you think it will take for those policies to change? Because it's like a freight train, it, right? It's like a freight train. Uh, it, it requires it to come home to you. Uh, and again, the crime is now starting to come home to places like Hancock Park. That's where the uh, y young lady from the UCLA graduate student was stabbed, Hancock Park. Beverly Hills is where that um, man broke into the house and murdered the wife of that record company, Mogul. It's one thing for homicides to go up in the inner city, as they are. And by the way, most of the victims of the increased homicide are black and brown people living in the inner city. But when you're finding these smash and grabs taking place at Neiman Markets and these high-end stores, all of a sudden, people on the left are beginning to rethink their assumptions. I'll give you a, a prime example. One of the issues when I ran was the DA in, in LA County, his name is George Gascon. He was handpicked by Gavin Newsom uh, to become the DA of San Francisco. After he became the DA there, he came down to LA and ran for and got elected DA of, uh, of LA County. And uh, he has been funded either directly or indirectly by George Soros or George Soros types. Well, there has been a recall movement and it failed because the signatures were not gathered in time. But there's been another recall effort. And now all of a sudden some of the very same people that gave money to, to, to uh, Gavin Newsom to prevent me from taking his job are now helping to fund the recall movement f to recall George Gascon because crime is now coming to their, to their neighborhoods. So. They don't have their kids in, in government schools. They have their all kids in private schools. They couldn't care less about the fact that 75% of black kids in third grade in government schools pre-pandemic could not read at state levels of proficiency. And those levels are low because they lower them all the time so they don't look so bad. The math scores are even worse. Half of all third graders in our government schools cannot read at state levels of proficiency. And 80% of the kids in government schools in California are black and brown. So elite people don't care about that. Their kids are already in private schools. But they do care about crime when it comes to them. Uh, and so I think there is a growing growing feeling that California is about ready to hit rock bottom. When I was running my campaign, I used a line that California needs to hit rock bottom, and I was asked, Elder, define rock bottom. I said, rock bottom is when the homeless guy relieves himself on your front lawn, provided your front lawn is in Brentwood or Bel Air or Beverly Hills or Malibu, and that is increasingly becoming the case. Homelessness is everywhere in California. Uh, they're, they're spending more money than ever to combat it. Uh, it's gotten worse. Uh, they're not going about it the right way. I had a plan when I was running for office. Uh, and so the number two is, number one and number two issues now for LA, for, for California, crime and homelessness. And a growing number of people on the left are beginning to recognize it is out of control and we need to rethink our assumptions. So I don't think we're there yet, but we're getting there. We live in an era of censorship and disinformation, and it can be really hard to know what's true and what's false in this information climate. To get honest information and insights you can trust, join us on Epoch TV. You can sign up for your 14-day free trial at ept.ms slash free trial yan. That's ept.ms slash free trial j-a-n. So very, very briefly around homelessness, and I've been, I've been also kind of following this issue a lot. What are the, what are the false assumptions here that are causing this situation? Let me put it this way. Unless you're prepared to move people from public properties when the conditions, quote, are right, close quote, we're having a point in this conversation. When there is sufficient housing built and somebody on the streets refuses to go, you have a choice. You can say, well, there's nothing we can do. Or we can say, you are going to be moved. You are going to move to an area where we have built for you, whether you like it or not. And until and unless we have a conversation where a sufficient number of people in California say, okay, you can't tell people to move when there isn't somewhere to put them. But this is the Supreme Court case, and it says when there is sufficient homes built, you can lawfully, physically remove somebody from a public area. A lot of people in California think it's cruel. 
the video of somebody yelling and screaming when they're being moved looks horrific. Just as it looked horrific in Israel uh, when people who were in these so-called settlements were, were, were forcibly removed when the policies changed. If, unless you're prepared to watch that and have that conversation, I got nothing for you. But when there is sufficient housing, and, and housing can be built Is that cheaply. housing or shelters or both? Or? Both, okay. both. Okay. Because it's more safe. There are thousands of people who are killed every single year in, within the homeless population by other homeless people. It is extremely dangerous. If you are a female in the homeless community, you are going to be raped. 100% of them have pretty much been raped over a certain period of time, and sometimes more than one. So it's not like we're doing this for us. We're also doing it for you. It's not healthy for you. It's not hygienic for everybody else. It's not safe. And, and affordable housing can be built, should be built. Uh, and once it's done, we have to have a conversation. Are you going to allow people to stay on the streets, even when there's shelter for them, or will they be physically removed? Ask Sheriff Alex Villanueva. He and I have had this conversation. And he said, Larry, until and unless Californians are willing to physically remove people when there's sufficient housing for them, we're going to have this problem. But this is a mental health and a drugs issue primarily, right? It's not. It's not. A, a, you didn't. You got kicked out of your home issue. That's what I understand is a, the kind of the foundational right. there, assumption. There, there are that some people that, that have lost their homes. There are some people that have lost their jobs. But most of them are mentally ill or are addicted to some sort of substance. And there's treatment available. And after Proposition 47 came along, you could now use up to three grams of meth without fear of going to jail because you're no longer a felon, you've committed a misdemeanor. Uh, and they'll write you a ticket, and because of cashless bail, you don't have to go to jail. So Sheriff Alex Villanueva, the sheriff of L.A. County, told me that after Proposition 47, our toolkit now had that removed. We can no longer tell somebody who's doing meth on the streets, either you go to rehab or you go to jail. Now they say, either I go to rehab or what? And we now have no alternative. And as a result, the homeless problem after 47 got worse. And by the way, the person that drafted Proposition 47 was George Gascon. Okay, the, the, the three most important things that California could do right now to affect change. Dramatically report, reform CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act, that has caused the price of a home in California to be 175% above the national average. The environmental extremists need to be reined in. California is down almost 1 million housing units as a result of environmental laws like that. And that's the, one of the primary reasons that the middle class and lower class people have left California that cannot afford the price of a home. Number two, school choice. The first step towards leaving poverty, think tanks on the left and on the right will tell you, uh, is to at least finish high school, and one where you can read, write, and compute at grade level. Third thing, make sure that bad guys do the time for their crimes. Uh, and we, we need to get rid of these soft on crime DAs uh, in laws like Proposition 47, we described that, Proposition 57, which lowered a whole bunch of, of categories of crime uh, into um, uh, nonviolent offenses. Now, because of Proposition 57, assault on a police officer is considered to be a nonviolent offense. Serial arson is a nonviolent offense. Rape of an intoxicated victim is a nonviolent offense, meaning the bad guy does not serve nearly the same kind of term he would have served prior to Proposition 57. The number one job of government is to protect people and property, make sure government does its number one job. I'm angry, Rick, for Blabberbuzz's truth reigns. Check out my videos on how woke companies are destroying American society and culture. More importantly, download the Blabberbuzz app from the iOS store and debate with other patriots who love America. You will even find loony liberals on the app that you can make fun of. Make the Blabberbuzz app part of your daily reading and time-wasting routine. Don't forget to share this video with your patriotic friends. And download the Blabberbuzz app. That's right, download it now. Truth rings.